Hi, I'm Ricky and welcome to my Realm of Colour. Today I'm going to teach you my method of a quick silver non-metallic metal. We're going to start off with a Mechanicus standard grey base coat applied over the black undercoat. I've tidied these areas up from the last video. If you missed how I painted the skin, robes and the yellow armour, please feel free to check out part one after this video. Now I've only watered down this paint a little bit, so it doesn't matter if it's slightly thicker than normal. I'm going to apply it over most of the black where you want your silver. All right. I'm going to leave some of the black shown through in the recesses and a few bits like indentations, etc., where there's some damage on the armor. But you can be slightly rough with this just because it's going to be scratched up armor, so it doesn't matter if it's too messy. At the end of the day, the goblin's not looking after their armor, so we're going to try and show that effect. As you can see here, I'm kind of doing a rough stippling effect on some of the areas where I'm just like doing thick dots. It's not like a fine stipple and I'll just kind of blend that in a bit as well. Just again, showing the effect of a bit of battered armor. And this is what it looks like with the Mechanicus standard grade done. It's just a nice solid base coat to work over. So next up we're going to add kind of cave reflections and a bit of interest to the armor using Sotec Green. It looks a bit more turquoise in real life than here, for some reason my camera's washed it out. And we're going to glaze this over the grey. We're going to concentrate a bit more on the higher areas of the armor to show maybe there's like luminescent fungus growing on the ceiling or he's like at the edge of the cave looking out maybe there's a bit of the glow from stars or moon or some other effect. This is just done with a thin glaze. It's quite a strong colour really when part of grey so you want it fairly thin. I'm happy with how that glaze has turned out. I've had a bit of colour to the armour, a bit of interest to it and now we've got to deepen the recesses. This is going to be all the shadow areas, so I've mixed a bit of black with some dark brown and I'm going to apply this around rivets, around the edges of the armour where armour plates meet and any lower areas such as underneath the armour, basically anywhere that's going to be in shadow. As you can see here, where there is a sharp edge to the armour, I'm applying shadow up to the edge on one side only. This helps to show which direction this light source is coming from. So part of the armor will be more in shadow than the other. Now that we've deepened the shadows, we're going to start adding some highlights to show our light reflections. For our first highlight color, we're using Astronomicon Gray. This can be applied around the edges of the armor and up to, but not over, where the dark areas are on the edges of the armor. So it shows a bit of separation again from where the light is falling. And once again, you could be a little bit rough with this. You don't have to be too neat because the rougher it looks, the more scratched up and beaten the armor looks. And once again, the goblins, they're not looking after their armor very well. So that's completely fine. Uh, just as long as you're neat enough to not go over any areas that you've already finished on the model. On areas such as the helmet here, where it's more of a sphere, I'm adding a slightly circular highlight, just to show like a ball reflection of light. Once that highlight is done, we're going to go back and just add in a bit of weathering to the armor. So I've added some Mournfang brown here. I've watered this down to a glaze consistency and I'm washing it around the rivets. Pushing up to where the armor plates meet. This can show dirt and grime streaking from underneath the plates. And also, I applied a bit extra around the feet just to show where his boots are probably going to be getting quite rusty 
running through all the puddles. As the Mournfang brown has been used to shade the yellow armour as well, it also helps tie the colour scheme together. I love the way the brown looks with the shading. So next up, it's the last bit of highlighting. This is going to be a fine edge highlighting and we're going to do this using white with a little bit of astronomical grey mixed in. This is going to be used around the sharpest edges of the armour just to show the highest light reflections and I'm also going to add in some scratches and also around any dents we're going to add it. And I'm going to add some tiny little lines randomly around the armour just to sell that scratched look to it. So I think it looks great as it is, but I feel it's not quite rusty enough for a goblin armour. So to make it look a bit rustier, I've watered down some scrag brown and I'm going to apply this in similar areas where the Mordenfang brown went. So such as around the rivets and the deeper areas and a bit where the armors um, combine, where rust would gather the most. Here is what the armor looks like when it's completed with the rest of the model. I have a tutorial next week on how to paint the squig in part 3 and in part 4 will be how to paint the bases. Thank you for taking your time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it please drop a like and share so others can find it and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Until next time, goodbye!